Morning, everyone. Dr. Eric, the fitness physician. I'm going to do a short live training today on a few topics that came up uh, from a client question uh, about recovery. So I want to uh, put this out there. It all has to do with recovery. And I, I, I tell people all the time, you know, train hard, but recover harder. If you want to, get the, you know, lose the weight, keep the muscle mass, get the body composition you want, you have to recover hard. A lot of people make the mistake of doing one of two things, right? They're either not training enough and they're not eating enough or they're overdoing it, right? They're, they're just training too hard and not eating enough or they're doing the opposite direction. So you have to mix and match these appropriately. You want to get, you know, typically if you're training hard, you want to make sure that you're eating more and fueling your body. Same thing. If you take some downtime, you know, flip it. But a lot of people, of course, nowadays, if they're going, you know, Orange Theory and CrossFit and all this stuff, they're just go, go, go six, seven days a week. And they're trying to fast and they're trying to do all these things. They're just doing too much. So the trick is to um, adequately match these. And I'll talk more about this in the future. But today, again, I want to talk about some hacks that you can do to recover fast, you know, without spending an hour at the gym stretching, right? Nobody wants to do that. Stretching is very important. That's a different topic. But again, the quick thing is basically what are some top recovery methods uh, to to bounce back so you could train the next day or get back to life, do what it, whatever it is that you do. So, and I don't like the word hack, right? But it's, but it is catchy. A lot of people like that because sometimes you can't hack this system a little bit, make it more efficient. But the trick of it is it's, a lot of these aren't just hacks. They're just actions that you have to do. There are tactics and strategies and simple things that can be done very quickly if you're short on time, right? Of course, um, I mentioned stretching, and of course, that can take some time, but it can be done relatively quickly too. And again, I'll talk about that in the future, but uh, the biggest thing today, so you finish your workout, what can you do, right? So one of the easiest things to do, I like, as a, you know, is breath work, simple breath work. Just, you can even just sit on the bench or sit on the floor or sit in the corner, close your eyes and take 10 slow deep breaths and count to five, you know, count to five. You now, if you just got done working out, it might be a little tricky, right? Because your heart rate's still up, you're going to breathe fast. So just breathe abdominal breathing. Feel the abdomen and the diaphragm go out as you breathe in and slowly go out. Don't breathe from the chest, breathe from the belly. And just try to breathe as slowly as you can. Eventually, maybe after a minute or so, then you can concentrate on doing some box breathing or something similar. So maybe you, you breathe in for maybe just all you can do is three to five seconds, hold it for three to five seconds, blow out for three to five seconds, and hold the exhale for three to five seconds. Do that for maybe a count of 10, and you'll feel tremendously better. That alone is a great way to shift you immediately back from sympathetic mode back into a parasympathetic mode, into that rest and digest mode. Again, I talked about before about the parasympathetic versus the parasympathetic, and you're go, go, go during the workout, and then when you're done, you're ready to get back into normal mode, slow down the nervous system, get your body ready to chill and relax a little bit so you can recover. Another one that you could do very related to that is, is to lay down on the ground and prop your feet up against the wall or up on a bench. And same thing, deep breathing. So that elevation of your feet combined with the deep breathing is going to very quickly relax your body and get you back into that parasympathetic mode, uh, and improve some lymphatic drainage, uh, take some pressure off and some increased circulation, and of course, uh, get you relaxed, right? So that's a very simple one. It only takes literally a few minutes and everybody's got a few minutes, right? The next one is simple movement. You could just walk around the gym, walk around the track, wherever you're at, and just shake your limbs out a little bit. You know, just kind of shake your shake your arms, shake your legs, you know, twist your body a little bit. Maybe just kind of bounce up and down a little bit. I mean, do a quick bend down and bend over, squat, squat down, squat back up, and then shake. Just kind of shake it around. You know, Pavel calls it fast and loose. There's a whole just movement, again, just getting the blood flowing. And it has to do with the nervous system. You're stimulating the nervous system to kind of chill out, right, and relax. And that's what you want. The nervous system is very interactive, of course, with every other part of the body. So by interacting with the nervous system, as well as relaxing the muscles, they work synergistically to kind of chill out your body, get it relaxed and repaired and get ready to recover. Um, of course, some people love to foam roll. And if you want to foam roll after workout, I think that's great. And you can totally do it. It takes a little bit of time though. So again, if you're short on time, this may not be the, the, the quickest thing. Again, I, this topic was more for quick things that you can do. But again, I do like foam rolling. And I do like stretching. If you have time to do it, then do it. If not, then you can do it later on in the day. Then another thing you can do afterwards. So you're in the gym or you're home, you do these things and you're going to feel better quickly just doing those things that I just mentioned, the movement, the breathing, uh, et cetera. Then when you're going to go, what are you going to do? You're gonna, probably going to go shower, right? So take a shower. But I love contrast showers, right? Where you shower up and then you spend maybe anywhere from 10 to 20 to 30 seconds in the heat and then maybe 30 to 60 seconds on cold and go back and forth. Do that two or three times. Do as many as five to 10 times. That alone will be great. You know, I like the cold and, and cool water, but by that alternating contrast shower between hot and cold, hot and cold, again, it's going to stimulate the nervous system and it's going to stimulate, get the vagus nerve stimulated where it's going to increase parasympathetic activity, which is going to slow down your body into kind of recovery mode. It's going to do many other things for neurotransmitters in the brain, for, for uh, other chemicals, uh, which I'll, you know, I'm not going to get into right now, but things like BDNF and uh, other things, other neurochemicals in the nervous system is going to help you slow down and recover and feel better and relax. 
Now, if you don't like to do that, or if you just, again, you know, people think, oh my gosh, it's going to take a few extra minutes. Well, everybody's got a few minutes, but at the least end it with a cold shower, right? The last 10 to 20, 30 seconds, put it on a cold shower, as cold as you can tolerate. I know a lot of people, when I tell this, they're thinking, oh my gosh, I can't do that, but just make it cool. And then after a number of times, you'll be able to make it colder and colder and colder. Eventually, you'll be able to just make it cold as cold as you want and then stand there for, again, as long as you can. Some people do it for several minutes, but at least do it for 30 to 60 seconds. And again, you're going to stimulate the brain. You're going to get that dopamine response, that dopamine surge in your body. And those feel-good chemicals, the endorphins are going to ru uh, rush through and again, make you feel better. And again, I speed up that recovery process. So I love a cold shower, cold plunge, wash, you know, if nothing else, at least splash your face with cold water if you can't tolerate that, right? But everybody can do that. And try the contrast shower or just a cool, again, start off cool. And then over time, you're going to build up and do make it colder and colder and colder. Now, some bonuses, other things you can do either right away or later on the day, um, just movement, right? Simple walking, Tai Chi, yoga, things like this. I love just walking at the end of the day when you're, when you're done with your workout, go take a walk around the block or walk around the gym and just do a short little walk. It's just it's a good way to kind of do a walking meditation, get the lymphatic flow, get the nervous system uh, um, calmed down like we talked about as well. And then you can go back and do the shower and the, and the uh, contrast shower, et cetera. Another one is light therapy. I love light therapy. You know, things like sauna, uh, things like red light therapy. These are fantastic for relaxation, for healing, for mitochondrial function, and so many other things. But maybe if you're done working out, you can do a, a sauna. I love to do a short 15 minute sauna session after my workout because it's now that my, I'm, I'm, uh, I did my workout, it's actually going to potentiate and augment the training effect on my muscles and, and also going to start the healing process as well. So it's a great way uh, to get a nice one, two punch and you can do your deep breathing one there too. So you can kill like three or four birds all at one time. If you have that, now, if you don't have access to a steam room or a sauna or something like that, maybe you have access to a red light, you can buy your own and keep it at home and use it after the gym or use it in the morning. It doesn't really matter as long as you're using it on a daily basis. Those, those red lights are going to help with many, many things, which I've talked about in other videos. But the biggest thing here is recovery. So light therapy is good. Um, another one is intro workout stretching. Say say you don't want to say I stay after the gym and stretch for 20 minutes or five, even five minutes. And you're in a hurry. Well, you can do intro workout stretching. And again, I'll talk about this in the future. But in between sets, you could do some stretching. It can be like the, the hypertroph hypertrophic uh, stretching or anabolic stretching, as it's been called, uh, where you just stretch for maybe 20 to 30 seconds in between each set. Or after your sets, you do two or three sets of stretching. This can actually stimulate the hypertrophic response and, and, and increase muscle mass. And it's also going to help with recovery and healing and recovery time. So you don't have to spend as much time stretching afterwards. And it's going to help you recover better from the next workout. And then, of course, there's nutrition supplementation. Everybody knows to recover, right? So that's, say, if you're fasting or even if you're not fasting, you want to fuel the body, right? Fuel it. Give it what it needs. You, know, you want to rest it. You repair it and recover. So, of course, you know that's the best time to, to take in your protein and your carbohydrates and your creatine and your glutamine. Those are my favorite ones, right? So you want to load up, make sure you're getting plenty of uh, adequate protein and amino acids, uh, as well as carbohydrates to fuel the body, replete your glycogen stores, and stimulate the, the muscle repair process. That's the time you're most anabolic. You, you tore down the muscle during the workout. Now you want to build it up, right? So make sure you're getting the, you know, a good five to five grams of creatine. I love glutamine because it also stimulates the muscle repair process and helps recovery. It also helps your body stimulate uh, glutathione production. And then again, a loaded, that's the time you want to have some carbohydrates again to fuel those glycogen reserves and help with a little bit of insulin secretion, which is going to stimulate the muscle repair and muscle building process. Um, of course, that, again, right away or certainly that evening, I'm a big, big fan of magnesium, especially at night to help us sleep. But magnesium is often depleted in most of us, especially post-workout. So you want to re replete your magnesium reserves with magnesium. You can use magnesium spray at night. It is absorbed very well through the skin or just takes some magnesium supplements. It's a great way to re help your body <clears throat> recover, replete those ATP stores, help your body uh, stimulate hormone production, recover uh, in terms of musculoskeletal skeletal soreness, and of course, reduce uh, the rebuilding process and the rehealing process. Another cool little hack I learned from a friend of mine, uh, Joel, is that you can take fucoidin and some coconut oil, maybe six to eight hours post-workout. That's also going to help stimulate the, the muscle to repair and quote unquote, stay young, right? It's going to build that, those repair, those tissues, and it's going to reduce some inflammatory cytokines to initiate the, and potentiate that healing process. So you can get fucoidin over, over the counter, a uh, simple supplement, make sure you get a good brain and take with uh, maybe just teaspoon or so of, of uh, coconut oil. And then that's going to help also to stimulate the muscle repair process and keep your muscles strong, young, and limber. So those are some very simple hacks that you can do that do not take much time at all. Very simple to do. Then, of course, again, if you do have time to do other things like stretching, uh, sitting in the sauna or the, the steam bath or something like that, totally fine. And you can stretch during the workout, after the workout, or later on that day. But these are some things you can do very quick. Again, just you know, lay down, do some deep breathing. If you have some time to do some movement, some stretching, some shaking, things 
things out, walking around, and then of course throwing sauna, light therapy, uh, and uh, very simple supplementation. Very simple to do, and you're going to feel a difference. Make sure you take time. Remember, train hard, recover harder. So if you have any questions, reach out, uh, let me know. Everyone have an awesome day, and we will talk to you soon. Bye.